Okay, so in this video, we want to look at two very fundamental properties that the derivative possesses and that the integral also possesses. So let's remember the uh, two fundamental properties of the derivative being a linear operator. And so the derivative of a sum of functions is the sum of the individual derivatives. And we can pull out constant multiples outside of the derivative. So if you differentiate, with respect to x, say k times f of x, where k is a fixed constant, this is simply k times, so we can move the k outside the derivative, so k times the derivative of f of x. So first property of the derivative. Second property, if you differentiate, again with respect to x now, a sum or a difference of two functions. So f of x plus or minus, doesn't matter, g of x, you can separate the derivative. So the derivative over a sum or difference is the sum or difference of the derivatives. So it will be the derivative of f first, plus if we have a plus, minus if we have a minus, the derivative of g. So those are two very basic but fundamental properties of the derivative. We can move constants in and out of the derivative, and if we differentiate a sum or difference of functions, we can differentiate the functions one at a time. Well, the integral has the exact same properties. So let's look at the simplest one first, which is the mirror image of this one, and then we'll um, show why it makes sense, why the property is actually true. So suppose we ask to integrate k times f of x dx. k is a fixed constant. We can pull k outside of the integral and do k times the integral of f of x dx. So let's see why this makes sense. Let's look at what is the integral of f of x dx. If you remember, we are asking for all antiderivatives of little f of x. So it's big F plus c, where of course uppercase f is an antiderivative of lowercase f. So if we differentiate uppercase f, our answer, we get back the original function. So let's see why this makes sense now. We are trying to integrate k f of x, and what we're saying is that this is the answer. So the derivative of our answer should be k f of x. So let's just replace the, the indefinite integral by its antiderivative form. So we have k times, and the integral of lowercase f of x dx is uppercase f plus c. So if we do multiply out, we'll have k uppercase f of x plus kc. And so again, we can now easily check that this equality is true. We are supposed to have found all antiderivatives of k f of x. So if we differentiate this function, it should be giving us k lowercase f of x. So let's differentiate this. and then we'll use our properties of the derivative. We are differentiating over a sum, so we'll differentiate this plus differentiating this. But both k and c are fixed constants. The derivative of a constant is equal to zero, so this term goes away. And here we can use the first property of the derivative. We can move the, a constant multiple outside of the derivative. As k is constant, we can use this property of the derivative. So we move k outside, and we get k times the derivative of uppercase f of x. But that is just the same f as f prime. 
And since uppercase F is an antiderivative of lowercase f, uppercase F prime is simply lowercase f. So we can replace. And this completes our proof. You see the derivative of our answer is the original function. And that's it. So indeed, if you integrate kf of x dx, you can pull the k out and do k times the integral of f of x dx. Alright, let's look at the second property, which is the same as this one for integration. So what if we wanted to integrate a sum or a difference of two functions? So we integrate f plus or minus, does it matter, g of x dx. The claim is that this is equal to the integral of f of x dx plus if we have a plus minus if we have a minus the integral of g of x dx. This looks intuitive. Let's prove it. Let's look at both of these separately. So the integral of f of x ds f of x dx is asking for an antiderivative of lowercase f plus some constant, and here I'll say c1, as we'll have another constant coming from this one. And here we are looking for an antiderivative of lowercase f, lowercase g, sorry, plus some other arbitrary constant. And again, uppercase f is an antiderivative of lowercase f. So the derivative of uppercase f is lowercase f. And uppercase g is an antiderivative of lowercase g. The derivative of uppercase g is lowercase g. Now, and you see I'm using c1 and c2 because both are arbitrary constants and they could be different. They don't have to be the same constant. And again, what is this? Well, it, this is supposed to be the antiderivative of the function f of x plus g of x. So if we differentiate our answer, we should get back the original function, as our answer is supposed to be an antiderivative of the original function. So let's differentiate this and see that we get lowercase f plus or minus lowercase g. So we differentiate our answer, uppercase f plus c1 plus or minus uppercase g plus c2. And now we can use here the properties of differentiation. We have a sum difference of four terms. We can differentiate one at a time. Differentiate f first, you get f prime, plus the derivative of c1, but c1 is a constant. The derivative is zero, doesn't matter. Plus or minus now, the derivative of uppercase g, which is g prime plus or minus the derivative of c2, but c2 is again a constant, the derivative is 0, we get nothing. And finally, uppercase f prime is lowercase g, uh, sorry, uppercase f prime is lowercase f, plus or minus, uppercase g prime of x is lowercase g of x. And so we're done. We took the derivative of our answer and we got back the original function. And this proves both properties of integration. So let's just summarize by putting them together. And very easy to remember because they are the same properties of the derivative in both cases. So if you integrate a constant times f of x. You can pull the constant out of the integral. And if you integrate over a sum or a difference of functions, you can integrate the functions individually. just as you had with the derivative. Now I want to leave you with one cautionary uh, message, and that is be careful when you have a product 
and a division. If you remember, when you differentiate over a product of two functions, this is not the derivative of the first function times the derivative of the second function. We have a product rule. It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Much more intricate than just the derivative of both multiplied together. And the same is true for the derivative of a quotient of two functions. The derivative of f over g is not the derivative of f over the derivative of g. If you remember from the quotient rule, it is f prime times g minus f times g prime over g of x all squared. A lot more intricate than just f prime over g prime. So you have the same possible um, pitfalls for integration. If you look at the integral of f times g, this is not the integral of f times the integral of g. Same as the derivative. The derivative of f times g is not the derivative of f times the derivative of g. The integral of f times g is not the integral of f times the integral of g. The same goes for the quotient. If you integrate f of x over g of x, this is not the integral of f over the integral of g. So be very careful not to make these mistakes. If you pull this up on a test, you get a zero. Now you can ask, okay, well we have a product rule for differentiation. We have a product, a quotient rule for differentiation. We can systematically differentiate a product and a quotient of two functions if we know the individual derivative of both f and g. We can plug f prime and g prime in the formula and we have the derivative of the product and the quotient. You can ask, are there such formulas for the integral of a product and a quotient? And the answer is no. When you integrate over a product or a quotient, this will depend heavily on what are the functions f and g. So these are really case-by-case -case problems. There is no nice such rule as in the case of differentiation. And we'll see these special cases as we go along, but remember that never make these kinds of mistakes. In our next video, we will consider a few simple examples of the indefinite integral using what we have so far with our power rule of integration and these two properties.